Let's consider what a potential terrorist group needs in order to carry out an attack. First, they may need more people to join the organization, so they conduct efforts to increase group membership. Secondly, they need money to travel, rent cars and houses, buy equipment and so on. Next, they need to select or acquire weapons. The chosen date of an attack may also be important. Terrorists often choose a date of national significance such as Independence Day. Now they need access to a target site, and this is frequently where you come in. Terrorists will attempt to gain access to the sites they've chosen in order to check them out. They do it by frequently wearing uniforms that make them seem harmless or legitimate, such as cleaning crews. They may also be impersonating police officers. Terrorists also want to know as much as possible about the selected target sites, such as building security measures, the number of possible victims, the target's vulnerabilities, the predictable schedule of incoming and outgoing people and packages, and possible escape routes. The following tape excerpt was captured from a terrorist in Singapore by Singapore Intelligence. The terrorist was conducting surveillance of a bus station where his group was intending to plant a bomb. While both the audio and video are somewhat rough because of the amateur taping, you can clearly hear that he is alerting his co-conspirators to the normal flow of people and vehicles at the MRT station called Yishun. You will hear him describing what he is looking for in selecting a target. U.S. military personnel will be dropped off on the bus and they will walk towards the MRT station. And this is a one, of, one of the buses, the, one of the regular buses that uh, ferry the military personnel from Sembawang to Yishun MRT station. So those, those personnel after they alighted from the bus, they will move towards the MRT station. As you can see on the far left, uh, with people walking towards the station, they will walk the same way. This is uh, the sign of a uh, Yishun MRT station, as viewed from the opposite side of the road at block 146. I'm sorry, block 152. Uh, this is the bicycle bay as viewed from the footpath that leads towards the MRT station. You will notice that some of the boxes that are uh, placed on the motorcycles, these are the same type of boxes which we intend to use. Beyond those motorcycles, you can see somebody waiting or standing beside a car. That is a pickup point where those personnel will queue up to board their bus or a light from the bus. This is a taxi stand. There's the entrance of the temple with many vehicles parked there. So it will not be uh, suspicious to have a motorcycle or a bicycle there. The pillars of the MRT tracks are very, very solid. You will notice there's a drainage hole. Drainage hole. It might be useful. The next step is also crucial. The terrorists must now attempt to move their chosen weapons into position. This is also a vulnerable point in the process and one in which your powers of observation are important. If the terrorists succeed in moving their chosen weapon to the site of attack, their next step, unless it is to be a suicide attack, is to escape. What is your role as a security officer in the prevention and possible handling of a terrorist attack? It can be summarized in three words. Recognize, report, and react. This program will train you how to recognize pre-incident indicators in the stages we just described and show you what you should report about what you notice. Reporting events or suspicions according to your post orders is very important. The program will also show you how to react both in cases of suspicious activity and in the case that a WMD attack occurs. In the following lesson, 
we will go into more detail about each of the three steps and stages. At this point, please return to the main menu and turn to Activity 3 in your Learner Workbook.